Hello viewers, you are watching English service of Amhara Media Corporation directly broadcasting from main studio of Bahadar, Ethiopia. I am Brahan working with the Grand Stories. Stay tuned. Ambassador Dina Mufti said, public diplomacy activities will be reinforced and continue to protect the national interests of the country. Mordo Moliye reports the detail of the story. A member of the Foreign Relations and Peace Affairs Standing Committee of the House of People's Representatives, Ambassador Dina Mufti, told Ethiopian News Agency that public diplomacy activities will be reinforced and continue. In particular, he elaborated that diplomatic activities are being carried out to promote and create proper awareness of the current peace efforts in other issues in the country. To this end, Dina added that public diplomacy efforts are also exerted mainly by Ethiopian diplomats, various institutions of the country, individuals as well by the parliament. Moreover, he indicated that efforts are being expanded to promote a positive image of Ethiopia, ensuring government-to-government -government relations become effective, thereby safeguarding the national interest of the country. According to the ambassador, in particular, activities are being undertaken by parliamentary diplomacy as it plays paramount importance to strengthen relations with various countries of the world. Furthermore, he explained that the creation of parliamentary friendship committees with various countries will continue on a large scale. Dina added efforts are being undertaken by the public diplomacy with particular emphasis to protect Ethiopia's political, economic, cultural, military and other interests. Noting that it is not left to one side to protect the national interest of the country, Ambassador Dina underlined that it is appropriate to inform everyone at every level of the activities being undertaken to bring about sustainable peace in Ethiopia. He urged that Ethiopians living abroad, higher education institutions, civil associations, religious institutions, and prominent individuals should embark on activities which center on maintaining the interests of the country. Dina said that public diplomacy activities which are aimed at strengthening people-to-people -people relations in Africa and at international level will continue. Ethiopian Airlines announces that it has finalized all preparations to commence a new service between Addis Ababa and Atlanta, United States of America. Abba Berhani has the detail of the story. Ethiopian will operate a four times weekly flight to Atlanta starting from 16 May 2023. Commenting on the launch of the new flight, Ethiopian Airlines Group Chief Executive Officer Ms. Fentaso said, they are truly delighted to open their sixth gateway in North America with the new flight to Atlanta. He said they have been connecting the U.S. and Africa for 25 years now and the new service will help boost the investment, tourism, diplomatic and socio-economic bonds between the two regions. He added that, as a Pan-African carrier, they are committed to further expand their global network and connect Africa with the rest of the world, and they are also keen to better serve the U.S. by increasing their destinations and flight frequencies. Atlanta Mayor Andre Deacon said on his part that, Ethiopian Airlines' new service to Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport is yet another win for their city as they continue to develop and expand their air service to Africa. He elaborated as they celebrate the new connection of the rich and dynamic cities of Atlanta and Addis Ababa, they look forward to a strong and successful partnership with their new partners in Ethiopia. Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport General Manager Balram Bibiodari said, At the world's busiest and most efficient airport, their mission is to deliver excellence while connecting their community to the world. As to him, the new partnership with Ethiopian Airlines expands that connectivity and access for their passengers and further solidifies their position as an industry leader and they are thrilled to welcome Ethiopian Airlines to ATL. Ethiopian Airlines currently operates more than 130 international passenger and cargo destinations. Atlanta will be Ethiopian Airlines' fifth passenger destination in the U.S. following Chicago, Newark, New York, and Washington. 
Ambassador Alalin Yadmasu told Ina that Israel will further strengthen its cooperation with Ethiopia in agriculture and technological development, Fukra Dizaudu reporters. In an exclusive interview with the Ethiopian News Agency, the ambassador said Israel has a long-standing relationship with Ethiopia, especially in trade, investment, culture, and people-to-people -people ties. Noting the multifaceted relationship between the two countries is still going, the ambassador said the two countries are in particular working closely in agriculture, technology, innovation, and other sectors. He added that Israel supports the efforts to build lasting peace in Ethiopia in addition to development cooperation. Ambassador Alalain further stated that his country will also continue providing finance, closing, and other supports to areas affected by the war. Besides, he pointed out efforts are being exerted to bring Israeli investors in agriculture, technology, and other sectors in Ethiopia. Applauding Ethiopia's progress in wheat production, especially using summer irrigation, Ambassador Alalain said Israel will assist Ethiopia to increase production and productivity by supporting agriculture through technology. He stated that Israeli investors have shown interest in investing in agriculture, technology, and other sectors. According to the ambassador in the health sector, Israel and Ethiopia are working closely. He revealed that since Israel has shown interest in sharing its experience in renewable energy, the relevant parties are working in cooperation with them. We cooperate with health institutions in different parts of Ethiopia through exchange of experience, cardiology, and other fields. With respect to aviation sector, activities have been carried out with the Ethiopian Airlines, which is prominent in aerospace in Africa. Ambassador Alalin, who recalled the people-to-people -people relationship of the two countries, disclosed that more than 7,000 Israeli tourists came to Ethiopia to take part in the Ethiopian Epiphany Tomcat Festival this month. Researchers in various institutions said the government of Ethiopia is giving due attention to climate smart agriculture to improve the livelihood of smallholder farmers, let's get more from the story. In an exclusive interview with ETP News Agency, Ethiopian Institute of Agricultural Research Director of Climate and Geospatial Biometrics Research, Girma Mamo said ETP is the land of contrast in terms of resources, ecology, climate and overall natural resources. The concept of climate smart agriculture is not new to Ethiopian farmers and they know it very well, he noted. Adding that bringing this potential into full growth has however been difficult due to many reasons. According to the director, the government has developed a climate smart agriculture roadmap 2021 to 2030. He added those agriculture professionals are working with respect to putting this roadmap into practice. Climate smart agriculture means utilizing natural uh, resources according to their uh, local environment. So when you go to down to the local level, every region and every uh, disti district is have their own resources. And the issue of climate smart agriculture means putting these local natural resource endowments into full benefits to their uh, highest potential uh, to unlock and to use these resources for the benefit of uh, development and uh, improving the livelihood of uh, our rural farmers. Grima elaborated that a number of institutions, including farmer-based organizations, are doing their best to really understand the concept and practice of climate smart agriculture, which is all about moving into modern technologies including the utilization of indigenous knowledge. Agricultural Transformation Institute, Digital Agriculture, Rural Financing and Climate Senior Director said on his part, it is difficult to transform agriculture unless and otherwise we focus on climate change. Nowadays, attention is given to climate change and developing climate smart technologies that benefit smallholder farmers. Ethiopia has good policies and strategies for agricultural development when compared to many African countries. The senior director pointed out that these issues are currently getting attention at high level, starting from the office of the prime minister. Some of the technologies we have for digitization are already at, uh, identified and it's process of implementations. We already um, established a system 
uh, with the partners, one with the other engaged in agriculture and digitization and also in climate. So we are trying to harness the knowledge and resources, what have you, to really fully implement those uh, best practices or climate smart technologies at ground level. Deborah Brahan, University Shoarovit Research Center Director, highly Terref observed the Ethiopian government uses to bring technologies and recommendations that are released by research institutes to farmers from top to down. Some of the technologies failed to adapt the specific environment, Hilo said, adding that it is therefore very important to know specific need of technologies that are really adaptable to the specific agroecological circumstances. And it is also very important to participate farmers at the grassroots level because the farmers themselves do have also ample knowledge, very rich experience about their uh, environment so that uh, considering the knowledge of the farmers and participating farmers in identifying the right technology for their farming system is very important and nowadays fa the government is also considering this thing. Tourists participated at the epiphany ceremony in Gondor expressed their delight to be part of the festival. Mordo Muli had the detail of the story. One of the biggest religious and public festivals that are observed during the month of January every year in Ethiopia, particularly in the Amhara region, is Tomcat or the Ethiopian Epiphany celebration. The Ethiopian Epiphany festival is much more colorfully celebrated when it comes to the historical city of Gondor. For the unique festival, thousands of domestic and foreign tourists fled to the city every year. Lydia and Loa are among the foreign tourists that have attended this year's Tumkat festival in Gondor and they told Amara Media Corporation how much they have enjoyed it. Uh, where you came from? From France. France, okay. Uh, so, is this your first time here? Yes, uh, it is okay. the first time, yes. Okay, so how do you get the festival? It's very, very nice and uh, lots of music, lots of color, people happy everywhere. So, yes, it's a very nice moment. I come from France too. Okay, so is this your first time here? Yeah, first time. So, how do you get the festivity in Gondor? Yeah, they are very beautiful and uh, it's very refreshing to see uh, all this joy and uh, happiness everywhere. So, yeah, and very colorful too. The two tourists to said Ethiopia is a beautiful country with fascinatingly unique religious and public festivals like Tumkat and added that they would share their pleasant experiences to their families and friends about the country. Yes, I'll tell them first that the Ethiopia, the whole country is amazing and uh, this uh, ce uh, celebration is very also because we don't have that kind of things in France. Ethiopia is not the most uh, touristy uh, country in, uh, in Africa and it's a pity because it's very beautiful and I think more people have to come here. Really. This year's Tumkat in Gondor has been uniquely accompanied by Azmari festivals and Miss Tourism Amhara beauty pageant events, which has given it much more color than ever. Tourists whom Amhara Media Corporation talked to in Addis Ababa expressed that the cultural and religious values of Ethiopians they witnessed at the Tumkat festival is remarkable. But let us reckon you the detail of the story. The festival of baptism which is celebrated every year throughout Ethiopia with religious and cultural traditions attracts not only the indigenous people but also international tourists. So they flock to the country every year to attend the festival. Foreigners say to Amiko at Jamira that they have been impressed by the Ethiopian culture and religious values outshine in Ethiopian epiphany. My name's Anthony Hamilton. I'm f originally from England, London. It's my first time celebrating here. I arrived in August and so this is all very new to me. Uh, as we uh, drove up here, I saw the crowds come in, the colours, the vibrance. It, it's a community event which I commend massively. It's so nice to see people uniting together. Well, I found that uh, totally uh, 
absolutely uh, different to the most part of our religion's celebration and I think that's uh, amazing because of the uh, huge movement of people that it uh, it's getting and actually a very great reflection of Ethiopian cultural diversity. My name is uh, Christopher Rizvanovic Steinbagen and uh, I am uh, Danish. We saw the whole procession go from there and it was just, um, I had my video camera and I did some very beautiful images. It was uh, really a, a true vision. It was beautiful. Uh, it's beautiful and it's very colorful and uh, it's very impressive to be honest. Uh, and you see a lot of people being very happy and that's very uplifting. To be honest, before I went here, uh, I didn't know what to expect and uh, the Danish uh, foreign ministry uh, has kind of a warning that you should be careful going to Ethiopia. So I, I was kind of, um, when I got to the gate in the airport, <laughs> I, was, I was wondering if it, um, if it was safe or if it was a good idea, but I've, we've been here for three days now and everybody is just incredible, uh, incredibly friendly and talkative and uh, it feels like a very, very safe and uh, very interesting, uh, beautiful place to stay at. According to the explanation of foreign citizens, many visitors come to Ethiopia, but their number during baptism is larger than ever before. Therefore, they say that baptism has a significant role in developing the tourism sector in Ethiopia. They also gave their advice that if the Ministry of Tourism creates favorable conditions for tourists, the sector can be well developed. I really hope that the tourists will return to Ethiopia and uh, it has obviously a big religious and cultural significance, but also as an outsider, something, someone coming from outside, it's just uh, amazing and beautiful to see the religious costumes and the people riding on horses and uh, everyone is just really has a, a blessing about their appearance. It's a spectacle, even even if you're not an Orthodox Christian, I would say. Ethiopia is an untapped resource. The people here are friendly. The, the countryside is amazing. And, you know, for, for the country, you need to sell this. In Europe, people don't know quite what you have here. And we need to promote that and celebrate it. Promote Ethiopia in Europe. Make sure people see the images that, that they should see. Unfortunately, many people in, 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 in uh, Europe remember the famine and the difficult times. That, that you need to get out into Europe and promote all the fantastic things you have and people will come. World-led stroke organization in collaboration with Bardar University has provided stroke medicine for hospitals in Ethiopia. Let's get more from the story. Dr. Mahari Gabrielhanes, lecturer at the University of Texas Southwest Medical School and stroke specialist, said stroke is fatal disease that causes disability on human beings. It is a disease that happened on the human brain and still the symptoms of stroke are not clearly known. He said University of Texas and Bada University are jointly working to enhance experience sharing on stroke medication in Ethiopia. The stroke specialist further said Texas University has given virtual lessons to medical doctors in Bahada University. He said World Stroke Organization has provided stroke medicine to Black Line, Tababagion and Falagheot referral hospitals in Ethiopia. It is a costly medicine worth of thousands of dollars. Dr. Nabi Yushitai, acting chief executive officer of Bahada University, has called a said the Babagion Hospital is giving a stroke medicine to patients who come to the hospital immediately. Dr. Yusuf Balai Benala, medical director at Falagihot Referral Hospital, said a stroke is attacking many people in Amhara region and stroke medical treatment is being given in Falagihot Referral Hospital by now. He said the mortality rate of stroke is high and the disease is bringing complications on human beings. The medical director said the stroke medicine given to Falagheot Referral Hospital will reduce mortality rate and complications that will happen on stroke patients. 
You have been watching English Service from Mara Media Corporation directly broadcasting from Main Studio of Bahadari, Ethiopia. This is all for today. Many thanks for watching. Do stay with Amhara Media Corporation English Service.